In this video I have a Techniques STS707 tuner that um, apparently has some problems. Let's plug it in and see what it does. I kind of like this note. To receive broadcast, connect the enclosed AM loop antenna and the FM antenna. No, actually it's going to receive something without an antenna. Okay. Got it plugged in now. And it is on. Apparently it's on. I don't see anything on the display. Okay, there's our problem. Look you at know, how dim that display is. I had to turn out all the lights in here just to be able to barely see that display. I mean, it's, it's dark in here now. I've basically gone down to one light bulb kind of facing away from everything. Even with even in the light that's in here now, I can barely see it. And the indicator is flicking, flickering. So we're most certainly going to have a power supply problem here. I, I think that's probably all that's wrong with this thing. Let's just see if it'll pick anything up. Can't even see what I'm doing here in the dark. Well, let's see if we're getting anything. Turn on my speakers. Uh, I don't expect other uh, review outlets or you. Sounds like it's working. It's just a display that's got a problem. Okay, as most of you know, what makes a fluorescent display work is high voltage. And if the high voltage is low, we are not going to get a proper display. So that's all handled by the power supply here. What I need to do is I need to test the voltages and make sure that I'm getting the proper voltages to that display to make it work. And looking down at these, uh, it looks like there's a bit of, almost looks like rust on those caps. Anyway, um, I'm going to pull a board on this thing so that I can actually do some work on it. i gotta, I got to take the whole thing apart to get underneath this board. We're going to have a problem in the power supply here. One of these voltages, I think, is going to be a bit low. So I'm just going to pull the board so that it's a little easier to work on this unit. Now, this unit's got exposed 120 volt points on the transformer here. So... For safety, while I'm working on this thing, I'm going to just cover up the 120 volt AC. Even though I'm running through an isolation transformer, uh, I don't want to accidentally make contact here and give myself a nasty shock. So I'm just going to just put some tape. Good idea to insulate, if nothing else, the primary of your uh, transformer, any of the terminals. I'm just going to do the second. Well, I don't need to do the secondary because I might need to measure some voltages there, but I'm going to make sure that the primary at least is covered up. Now I can go in here and make some measurements. For a vacuum fluorescent display to work, you need a high voltage source. Most of them operate 35 or even as much as 60 volts for the grid. So we'll power this thing up. Now you see I'm safe. Turn on the power, and our display is very dim. You can still see it flickering away there. And I just have to find my ground reference on this power supply. That's typically going to be a capacitor source, one of the one of the negatives of a capacitor. So here are some capacitors here. This is probably my negative source. 23 volt supply there, it's an 11 volt supply there, and that's a 24 volt supply. Looks like. You gotta figure out which one of these drives the display driver IC. From the looks of the pins on the display, they tend to be coming back down into, looks like these two ICs here are the display drivers. So I have to check my voltages to my display drivers. It's going to ground my meter. Take one of the chassis ground points here. We'll just start making some voltage measurements around here. My 
minus 7. Minus 7. Minus 7. See, some of these ones may be a little bit low. Minus 8. 4 volts. 4 volts. It might be the negative supply that's on the little, little bit on the low side. So, to go and find where that reg where it's regulated or where it's generated. And then up onto this one here, 5 volts, minus 8. I have a feeling it's probably the negative, the negative supply is probably the one that's a little on the low side, minus 1. I do have a suspicion that my fault is going to be probably one of these small capacitors down here. And I bet it's in the negative supply. So this is, it's probably going to be one of these ones. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, get the ESR tester out and just start testing the ESR on some of these capacitors in here. These big ones over here that had the crud around it here, I thought maybe it was the cap was leaking. Those are actually 3.3 farad. They're only like 3 volts each. There's two of them in power, or two of them in series, which gives you about 1.6 farads of energy. Now that's that's a huge amount. It may only be 3 volts, but if you were to short those when they're charged, it would create quite a nice spark. And what this is for is this is for the memory backup. So that when the power is turned off, this doesn't use a battery. A lot of a lot of um, tuners used a battery, like a lithium battery to maintain the memory when the power was off. This one uses a self-charging capacitor. And I, I looked at them and it's, they're actually not leaking. I don't know where that corrosion or that crap was coming from, but I just cleaned it up. I pulled the cap off the board and it's, it's not bad. Anyway, I'm gonna concentrate over here on my supply. See if I can get this, this uh, display working a little bit better than it is. Whenever you're working on these tough dog problems, it sometimes is helpful to have a schematic. So I was able to find the schematic and it looks like this negative supply, there should be a negative 31 volt line. And it is fed off of R709. So let's find R709. That should be a negative 31 volt supply. We'll just uh, find it down here. R709 is right in the front here. Let's just check for our, our voltage there. It's, it's, it's going to be low for sure. I bet you it's only coming up about 8 volts. But let's just check it and see. This is the supply for the uh, display. if I turn the meter back on. Yeah, it's only coming up at, at negative 9 volts. And that should be negative 31. So, we know the voltage is low. We just have to find out why it's low. We'll go back on the schematic here. This is where I'm measuring it here. And our our negative supply is a, is a voltage doubling is a voltage doubling circuit. So it's taken off the 9 volt supply here and it goes through a couple capacitors and a couple diodes to boost the voltage up. So somewhere in this circuit here is going to be the problem. So let's just look at it one stage at a time. I know it's hard to see on camera but I've made some progress. I've just bridged one of the capacitors here, C718. And I don't know if I dim some lights down here you might be able to see it a bit better. But um, if I take, I've just bridged it here. Watch when I remove it, it'll get dimmer. See? Although when I test this on my ESI meter, it's actually testing pretty good. Let's just take a look at uh, what the capacity is, whether we've lost our capacity with the microfarad tester. Because this cap tests good, but when I bridge it in the circuit, it, um, it brightens up. So we'll just test this to see whether we've lost any capacity on this capacitor. Okay, uh, cap tester, 
discharge it here. Just put this across here and see what it registers. So it's measuring 106. So this cap actually tests good uh, in the it, like it tests good out of the circuit. Yet my voltage is low, so so I'm back looking at C716 again, which is let me zoom the camera in here on this schematic so we can see it real clear. Okay, um, C716 is this one here. It's 63 volt, 100 microfarad. Put the ESR tester on it. I pulled it out of the circuit. ESR tester. Okay, 100 microfarad. Uh, 63 volts should be 0.3. So it says. This is the one time the ESR tester is wrong. Okay, 0 0.10. Looks great, doesn't it? Okay, my other capacitor tester. It's got capacitor reading on it. Short it out, make sure it's discharged. Positive terminal, negative terminal. That don't look like no 100 microfarads to me. Interesting. Ohms. Point 0.4 ohms, point 0.3 ohms. This capacitor has shorted internally. Dead short. Let's find a replacement. We'll play, change that capacitor. And um, see if that fixes the problem. I have a 100 here. I don't know if this is high enough voltage. It's only a 50 and it's calling for a 63. Although I might be able to get away with it because it's actually not working on the, anywhere near that kind of voltage. Uh, this is an 85 degree. I've got 105 here. I might be able to get away with this one. Because really it's only working on 9 volts AC. It's just coupling the 9 volts AC into the voltage doubler. So the 50 is probably okay. Well, I was going to go see if I can find another one. Okay, let's uh, solder the new cap in place. off the excess leads. I don't know. You guys ready for this? Oh boy. I'm nervous. Are you guys nervous? Oh, power on. <laughs> Fixed it. Fixed it. Capacitor. C716. right here okay so how this works this is the voltage doubler actually it's a tripler we have our AC 9 volts coming off our transformer and it goes through the switch and then it comes through this capacitor and then it goes through a series of diodes which basically it pumps so one half of the waveform the positive half gets dumped to ground and then the negative half passes on to the next circuit and it charges these capacitors along the way and every time it every time it goes through another diode and capacitor it doubles the voltage until we get up to our 31 volts which is clamped by D uh, 70 I think 708 it's a Zener diode anyway that is the part that failed on this and um, I found it just because of I, my knowledge of how uh, these circuits work. I was led astray when I was relying on the meter. Because in this case, the capacitor had shorted and the ESR had not gone up. So the ESR meter in this case 
was completely useless. The capacitor meter itself was actually more useful, but not in the circuit. I actually had to remove the part to test it. What I did for testing on this circuit is I wanted to verify, I, I checked a few of them out when I bridged a couple capacitors. Of course, bridging this one in the circuit is not going to do a bloody thing because it was shorted. So that would only work if the capacitor was open. But what did send me down the right path is when I bridged, which one was it here? It was a small 47 microfarad, this one here. C709. Was it C709? No. Yeah, 709. 3.3. This one here. When I bridged this one and I initially turned the power on, my display came up a little brighter and then faded back out. Just because adding another capacitor to this added a little more charge. The first kick, that was the, the key. I bridged this with like, a, I think it was 100 microfarad across here. Because what happened was that the first kick that went through that shorted capacitor give me enough of a charge to build up a little more of a charge in this this larger capacitor and my display actually came brighter and then it went back down dim and started the flickering again. So that gave me an idea that I, I knew that it was back in the circuit. So then what I did is I disconnected R709 because I did not know whether I had a, a loading problem on this side of the resistor or whether I had a power supply problem. So as soon as I disconnected R709, of course I've eliminated the display and I've eliminated the drive IC and everything and now I've just isolated it down to the circuit and my voltage never increased. So then I went back and I looked at, I, I of course checked the diodes and the diodes all test good. So it didn't leave a lot to go on. Okay, my capacitors don't test bad for ESR and I can't measure capacity in circuit with my other meter. I have to pull the capacitors out. So I started at C7, 718, 716, whatever the one, the one that we changed. I started, that was the first part I pulled out because that's the first one. And as soon as I pulled that out, I put it on the capacitor meter and of course it didn't measure. So I put it on ohms and oh, it's shorted. Hmm, that would explain why it's not working. New cap, problem solved. Let's put it back together. Client would be very happy. Um, the client that owns this piece actually is the same guy that brought me the leak. Okay, he brought me this. He wanted this fixed because he loves his tuner and his display was not working. So he wanted this fixed and he brought me a couple of other pieces that he wanted fixed. The leak, it was to be looked at to see what the problem was. So the reason it's not being repaired is because the client has not chosen at this time to repair it. Now that he may change his mind and we may end up looking for a substitute transistor for that. But that's where that one sits. This is the same owner that owns this one. This piece is going back to him working and he'll be very happy. So let's get the base on here. We'll reassemble this thing and test it all. Before anybody gets offended, I think this is a shitty design too. These units where you actually have to tear the whole thing apart to do any work on them. It's just a joke, right? But I mean, I had to pull this back panel out here that holds the power cord. That goes in behind here. Locks in place like that. And now I can get the board sort of back in here. It's got to go on these little standoffs that, that hold the board up from the main board so that there's no contact. There's actually a, a barrier down there. Okay, now let's see if we can get the front panel on. I mean, these things these ones here aren't the easiest to 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 work on. That's for sure. You got to start removing. You got to start removing all kinds of different. Uh, you know, you got a dozen screws to remove on here. Got all these grounding screws. bracket that goes on the back here and that holds the display in place as I say there's, there's tons and tons of screws on this thing so of course the question on everybody's mind is will it blend I mean will it tune of course it will 
they're not so senior, so you can't. Take so this it. unit's kind of unique because it's got a it's got a variable bandwidth. So depending on the quality of the signal coming in, it'll actually pick a wide or a narrow band. If I tune a signal in, for example, like this channel, it's a weak signal, but this 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 station actually has a digital carrier running high definition um, FM or high definition radio which is in the sidebands and this receiver knows it's got to go to a, a super narrow and same with this one this one's a wide band narrow band this one here's a wide band as well it uh, I gotta shut that off before I get in trouble uh, but yeah no it's this thing is incredible not only is this thing incredible but take a look at this it's got a button on here for uh, signal It'll actually tell us what the signal strength is, 40 dB. This station here, what's the signal strength on this one? 52 dB, right? A little weaker signal. And 92.9, it's 30 dB. That's a little strong, stronger signal, I guess. No, I guess this, this, is my, this is a weaker signal. I'm thinking the minus side, so that's, that's a weaker signal. 93.7, it's 32 dB. 88.1, 40 dB. You know, 52 dB, so that's a pretty, you know, fairly strong signal. 52 dB, right? So, uh, anyway, um, yeah, it's that's that's the one coming out of my modulator that's sitting like five feet from here. So it should be a strong signal. This is my little MP3 player uh, that I got in trouble with with the last video because I played more than eight seconds. Even though I was talking, it was just kind of going in the background. Uh, anyway, it's fixed, and uh, those super caps should uh, hold those stations. They are charging up, and it looked like a bit of leakage around one of them, but I don't think so, because when I pulled the one out that looked like there was leakage around it, there was nothing coming out of the bottom of the cap, so I think we're okay on there. Uh, gained one capacitor. And that wasn't it. What do I do with it? And I know the guy's going to want to probably see this thing. So i got to find the dead cap now. The one that was shorted. Anyway, one shorted cap. That's all it was. Killing the display. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Okay.